Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and you join us out again driving the Abarth SS so that can only mean one thing, another update. you some stats on this Abarth SS. I believe it's the only car that I've owned that has more torque than brake horsepower. Obviously that's because it's a 1.4 litre turbo, so the turbo provides all the torque. And it's a very nippy car, my friends call it the rocket roller skate for that particular reason, because it's very spirited. When the turbo kicks in, it gives a lot of additional performance to the car. So what's happened? Why are we providing you another update? In the last 150,000 mile update, I stated that the car was going for an MOT and that it had a precautionary warning that um, in its previous MOT that the front offside, which is the right hand side, lower control arm was failing and would need to be replaced. And you could hear the knocking audibly on the camera. So it was very evident that uh, both the lower ball joints needed to be replaced. And in effect, you, you replace the whole control arm. So I expected that. So, the car went in for its MOT. Wow. Yes. It was quite a shocker. The list that came back was very extensive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull over. I'm going to give you a walk around of the car detailing all the issues that came up that actually failed the MOT and then the precautionary items, the warning items on the recommendations list that needed to be updated in the future or, not, or that needed to be replaced. When the suspension is fine and there's no issues, it's actually quite a pliable, nippy, little manoeuvrable car. Um, very sprightly, the 1.4 turbo is very, very spirited in the performance it provides. Yes, it's only 158 brake horsepower, but if you keep it on song, which is quite easy to do with this little turbo, it's very nippy. It's, it's, it's a very good little daily driver and gets you from A to B in a very spirited fashion, depending on obviously how you drive it. Now I drive it with sport mode off, would you believe it? Yeah, heretic but I drive it with sport mode off because it makes the steering better. I get better feel through the steering and it's not so heavy. When you have sport mode on, it really puts, it really makes the steering a lot more heavy. It's electric steering and I've never liked that. And driving it with sport mode off is spirited enough. You don't really need the additional boost that, sport, that the sport mode gives in, um, when it remaps the ECU. And I thought at the time I was specking the options quite high, but the options have proven to be very useful especially for example the sunroof the electric sunroof it pulls all the way back and it and it it um, flips up as well at the top that operability has been very very useful for the car i've used it extensively throughout my usage the electrochromatic rearview mirror and the heated door mirrors it all comes as one option has been very very useful reduces the glare extensively and i've done an awful lot of mileage in this car especially to and from videoing cars to end locations so th that has been a very very good option to have on the car the ss kit well, that's, that's provided additional performance and it provided an additional map into the ECU because the ECU was replaced for a new SS ECU and the suspension uh, and brakes were upgraded. Um, the suspension I actually downgraded back again. It was the springs because it was just too harsh. So I put the original springs back on again. But the larger discs on the front have proven to be beneficial. And of course, you get the bigger wheels as well to support and to be able to fit over those larger front rotors. just for a short period of time we'll actually put it into sport mode which is quite a rare occasion for me but the steering does stiffen up extensively when you do that and it it does push the boost up if you hold your foot onto the accelerator at the same point in normal mode in without the sport mode engaged and then you engage sport mode and don't push your foot on the accelerator you can see the boost gauge go up and the car will move more forward it will it will automatically accelerate forward just on you pushing the boost so that gives you an appreciation of the mapping change that goes into the ECU with that boost with that with that sport option and the car is actually driving very nice at the moment I would say it's driving comparable to when it was new so as long as you keep these cars maintained they keep their performance and they keep their maneuverability they keep their placement on the road
even by modern times, this car is still nippy for a 1.4 litre turbo. Now because this is a turbo 1.4 litre, it's got a red line of 6,000 RPM. So it's not the highest red line, but you don't really need to take it much higher than that because the torque figures are delivered lower anyway, being a turbo. So you're not gonna get much benefit absolutely screaming the hell out of it. see there I was towards the top end of the red line I was well I was around 5,000 then and it really had dropped on its torque delivery it wasn't really delivering much more performance so you don't gain any benefit really by wringing its neck right out to the 6,000 rpm these undulations in the road it soaks them up very well it's a lot better now though that it hasn't got the SS springs on there. Putting, putting the standard above springs back on has made quite a bit of difference there. It's made it a bit more pliable. Having said that, around some of the really aggressive, bumpy sections of road where we live, it's really unpleasant. We've had situations where we've dropped into a, a crashy section of road and it's been so aggressive that we've actually nearly hit the ceiling of the, of the car where the car's bounced around so much. So we stopped at one of our regular locations so I can give you a bit of a walk around the car and tell you about the issues that the car had following its MOT. It's a bit windy, so hopefully you can hear me okay. So I gave the car to my mechanic who usually looks after this car. Previously during its MOT last year, it had a warning on the front right hand lower control arm. So I knew that needed to be replaced. So I was expecting that. Now, first of all, my mechanic took the car down for its MOT to see exactly what it was likely to fail on. So he knew what he had to repair. Now, this is quite standard practice with, with mechanics. Unfortunately, the list was extensive. It was a lot more than a lower control arm. So what did it fail on? Pretty much, it was nearly a scrapper. Yes, it was that bad. The near side shock absorber was leaking, quite, leaking quite badly. It fell on, yes, the lower control arm, but we already knew about that. The biggest problem it failed on, guys, was the whole rear axle beam. The whole rear axle failed. And it failed because it was quite badly rusted. The whole rear axle on your bath acts as like a, a torsional bar as well. So it adds that flexibility. So the actual rear axle flexes quite a bit. And that's by design. Whether or not you perceive that to be a good design or bad design, I don't know. But once they start getting pitted, of course, that flexibility in the rear axle starts incurring stress on the rear axle and starts co causing problems in effect. Now, because the rear axle was quite rusted, it got pitted and started to get hold where that, that twisting of the rear axle to provide that torsional flexibility was acting and causing stress on the rear axle. So when it went through its MOT, it failed very badly. Now it failed on some connectivity points where the, where the rear axle connects to the body of the car, connects to the chassis of the car, and it failed on the rear axle beam itself. Thankfully, changing out the whole rear axle beam resolved all those problems. Now also, it had advisories on the rear discs. Now I'd replaced all the discs on the car a couple of years ago, but the new discs that I put on were a new type of design. And I thought they would be a lot better than the OEM, but unfortunately they weren't, so they, they wore quite badly. So those rear rotors had an advisory on them as well that were on that rear axle beam. Now a rear axle beam is quite expensive on these cars. As you can imagine, a whole new rear axle beam, it takes it nearly to the point where it's just not viable to replace it. You might as well just scrap the car and, and go forwards with another car. But my mechanic found a second-hand rear axle for this car at a very reasonable price. It only cost a few hundred pounds and it came from a scrapyard. Now, yeah, you think, okay, it came from a scrapyard, not so good, but the car it came off of was only a couple of years old and only done a few thousand miles. So the whole rear axle was in very, very good condition. It still had the paint on there, yeah, it wasn't pristine, but it would go on, it, let's put it this way, it's gonna outlive this car <laughs> for sure. That was a good way forward. And of course, because that rear axle didn't have many thousands of miles on it, it meant that the rear rotors were in good condition as well, and the rear calipers. And because of the way that rear axle had been taken off the scrapper car that it was removed from, it meant that the rear axle was, with all its pipe work, was in very good condition as well. So what happened was my mechanic removed the old rear axle 
and replaced as a job lot the whole replacement rear axle that had been procured fit the whole unit on and that over, that got over the problem of the rear axle and the rear rotors that were pitted now the rear rotors were an advisory they weren't a failure point but it meant that they upgraded them as well so it was a lot easier because on a car like this where it's worth very little value the, the major cost incurred is labor when you talk about replacing parts of this nature so it's quite an extensive labor cost to replace that rear axle beam so the last thing you want to do is increase those labor costs by having to feckle around and mess around with changing all the pipes etc if it had been hacked off the previous car but fortunately this one was in very good condition from that point of view so the whole lot could be fitted on as a whole job lot in one go and that resolved the problem fantastic now other little issues that had to be resolved was the rear rear number plate lights because they weren't working and that was a wiring problem so so the mechanic managed to resolve those issues as well and when we got underneath the car and had a good look at the car because it was on the ramps I, I was actually there when when the mechanic replaced the rear axle beam the underneath of the car the bodywork of the car is actually in exceptional condition even though it's done a hundred oh, well it's over 150,000 miles now it's about 152,000 miles the condition of the bodywork of this car is very good so we had a discussion about the viability of replacing these parts before we actually went forward with the work and we came to an agreement or rather he Gave, some, gave a perception of how long the car would last and we estimated that the car's good for about three to five years now. So the days of Fiat's rusting through is far gone. This car is in the bodywork of this car is in exceptional condition, um, especially for 152,000 miles and it's still on its original clutch, which is impressive. So the plans for this car are next year, around springtime when the weather picks up a bit, we're gonna replace the other shock absorber on the off side, which is the driver's side because even though it wasn't weeping you usually replace them in a, in a pair but to get the car through the MOT very quickly because I needed the car we only replaced the one side shock absorber so even though the, the offside shock absorber is in good condition we're going to replace that anyway because they should be replaced as a pair I'm going to get the, my mechanic to do some other bits and pieces on the car as well just to bring it up to, um, to spec but the car is driving very very nicely at the moment as you will have seen from this bit of driving con that we've provided you it's driving loads better than it has in the last five years i would say no more knocking obviously from the control arm the suspension feels really sorted it feels pretty much like it did when it was brand new clearly it doesn't look like it's brand new but you will also notice that yes it's been washed <laughs> so the car has been washed so it's had a bit of a clean and i'm going to try and keep it a bit clean now moving forwards because it does look a lot better but this car doesn't get the love. The 458 gets the love, of course. So it's, it's for good reason that I don't spend all my time on this car. But it is maintained. Now, the car hasn't been serviced yet, but I've got all the service kits. So I'm going to go forward and service this car myself. That will be oil, air filter, pollen filters, etc. Um, it's already had the brake fluid flush through because as a part of the because as part of fitting the new rear axle all the brake lines had to be bled so the whole all the brake fluid was flushed through and renewed as well at the same time because it was viable to do it. It was, it was more cost effective to do that at the same time but the servicing of the car i'll do myself um, and like i say oil oil filter air filters pollen filters etc i'll do all that myself and that shouldn't be too much of a task and we'll try and bring you along for that service as well so that's the update on my bath a bit of a quick sharp update i didn't expect to be giving you an update so quickly i expected just the lower control arm to be replaced and it to sweep and sing through its mot but unfortunately that wasn't the situation it fell quite catastrophically and if it wasn't for the fact that my mechanic was able to find a new rear axle beam very cost effective and with very few miles on it it was pretty close to being a scrapper at this stage so this car was nearly on the scrap heap so thankfully it's revived again and it lives another day fantastic because this car has got a lot of history for me and my family hope you enjoyed the update guys thanks a lot for watching and i didn't get to say it before but because this is going out just before christmas 2023 happy christmas guys and happy new year take care